Welcome to the online ministry of Sweet Haven Baptist Church. We're so glad you've tuned in to join us today to hear a message from God's Word. Take your Bible, a notebook, a pen, and get ready to hear what God has to say to your heart. We also go to an extreme amount of time today, uh, given that we're doing the Lord's Supper as well. And so, what I'm going to try to do is pack in about four different messages in <laughs> a very short time. Maybe five. I do want to welcome you to Sweet Haven Baptist Church. It's a blessing to be a part of this church, and I'm thankful that I get to be a part of this church. And I hope you feel the same way. Amen. If you're Amen. visiting here, I want you to know you're very welcome. And we're very thankful to have you. If you've been here for a long time, we're even happier that you're here. Because you can take it all. You're pressing it. This morning we sing saying about Christ and his suffering on the cross and all that he's done for us. What was the purpose of all that? It was to bring us into his family. What was the purpose of that? Was it so that we could just enjoy all the benefits of being in the family of God and sit back and just relax the rest of our lives? Now he's called us into a family of workers, laborers. It doesn't mean that we're called to not enjoy this life. In fact, we get to enjoy this life better than anybody else in the world because we know our Redeemer lives. Amen. And he loves us. And he rescued us, and we have so much to serve him for and to thank him for. A couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago now, we did our annual general business meeting. And we do that on Wednesday nights, and it is my heart's desire that everybody comes to that and gets to see the look back at the year and to look forward to the next year. But the truth is, on Wednesday nights, we don't always have as big of a crowd. Some of you work, some of you can't be there, but even for those of you who were there, I want this morning to be a bit of a reminder, and we're going to dig a little bit deeper into some of those things. And so this morning, we're going to kind of re-go over our annual general business meeting, not the financial part, not the voting part, just, just the facts of what the church looked like for this past year. And then this morning, we're going to look at the vision for this coming year. The Bible says, without a vision, what happens? People perish. There, there's an emptiness and an end to the things that are being done. So we ought to be looking forward to what God is going to be doing, not just in what he has done. So this morning, as we get started into this, we're going to have a word of prayer, and I want to encourage you to pray with me and ask the Lord to speak to your heart through it all, to draw us closer to him and give us all the vision for this coming year. Because I'm excited about what God's about to do. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, for your love, and for your mercy. Father, this week we are looking at the things that have taken place over the past year. And we're looking ahead to the next year, the next five years, the next 10, 20, 30 years. Lord, just we're laying the foundation for the work that is to be done. The Lord, it's not our work. If it is, it will fail. It's the work you call us to do. And Lord, we've all, I hope, had a heart to serve you this past year. But in some of it, we get weary. In some of it, we get worn down. Lord, in all of it, we get distracted. So Lord, would you help us this morning to refocus our hearts and minds on the work that you've called us to do, to have a fresh look at it all, and Lord, would you renew our passions for the work? Would you put a fire in our hearts to do your work and your will, not our way, but yours? And Lord, in all these things, we will thank you for it. We love you. And we ask all of these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to switch over to my other microphone, so I'm going to be on my Make sure we're all up there. So the first thing we're going to do this morning is take a quick look back at 2022. <coughs> you know, when we think back over the last year, the year before, the year before that, what a year. But a lot different. Um, we've seen over the course of our lives, I would imagine everyone here would say the same thing, a vastly different world than it was five years ago, 
10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's always changing, it feels like, and yet it's always the same. But this past year, there was a lot of changes. And one of the biggest changes in the situation that the church itself was Pastor Walker's retirement. Uh, looking through some of the things that he left behind here, I can see how organized he was and what a blessing he was in so many ways. And we've talked him well, through chats and things here and there. Never met him in person yet, looking forward to it. But he was here for 22 years. Some of you were here long before he was here. And some of you came during his tenure, and some of you came after his tenure. So not every one of us knows him like the other one would, but that was a big change. That's a big change in the life of the church, no matter how long the pastor's been here. It was a big change. Then you went through the pastoral search, and you didn't know what you were getting into. Now you're wondering, what did we get into? <laughs> pastoral search, of course, for all our family, and we are so thankful. Uh, coming up, I think in February will be an anniversary of the first time I got to preach here. And so almost a year of preaching here, um, it's been quite a change for you. It's been quite a change for our family. So these are big transitions. We look at the big events in the life of the church. Great share ministry, great successes in that. We've seen tremendous blessings from that. Teen activities, children's ministries, vacation Bible school this year was a huge blessing. And then missions conference. That's one of those things that I always hold near and dear to my heart. So we get to watch all of these things take place. And certainly these things are going to be repeating this year. For the church projects, we saw the parking lot resealed and striped. We've seen the new sound system and speakers installed, and everybody said, Amen. <laughs> We're not done with that. We've got more to do and more fine tuning to do. Hopefully, that in this coming week, we'll be working on that some more. In the school projects, we've seen two new HVAC units installed, new fire system put in, new computer system, which is a, a, a computer server system, which is either near repaired or is it done yet? About 60%. 60%. So we're almost done with that. That's a big blessing. In the school line, we've seen new teachers hired, student body growth, really good growth this past year. And look at that. About 20 salvations in our school. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I don't care what kind of investment it takes. You look at those numbers and the fruit that we're seeing there. It's worth it all. We praise the Lord for it. In a church life, we've seen several baptisms. Five people have joined the church. Outreach ministries have been started back up. Master Club's program has been going strong. We've seen church growth. We've seen many decisions for the Lord. And then there's many more that maybe have taken place in your heart. We don't know about publicly, but I hope you've seen growth in your own life, drawing closer to the Lord. So we look back at 2022, and it's been a good year. And maybe personally, it was hard in some aspects. Like, okay, it's been hard here. Uh, adjusting to a new church and a new schedule and learning all about the schools. And I'm sure the staff has had some interesting adjustments, trying to get used to a different pastor after 20-some years of Pastor Walker. There's difficulties, but there's growth. And there's joy in all of that. So what's it going to look like this next year? We talk about a look ahead. We, we say without a vision, people perish. We have to have some sort of an idea of what it's going to look like moving forward. And these things may be familiar to you because we talked a little about them in our annual general business meeting. But I do really want to approach these. And I told you we would be approaching these topics from different angles in the days ahead. And so this morning, we're going to look at these from a slightly different angle. I want you to take your Bibles with me if you want to turn to the book of Ezra. The Old Testament, the book of Ezra. And as we deal with the look ahead, the first thing that we're going to look at this morning is a fresh look. Now, we can talk about a fresh look in a lot of different ways. We can talk about, well, I'm going to start addressing it. Well, we're not going there. Maybe you get a new suit or a new tire, a new shirt, or a new, new pants, a new shoes, or whatever. That's part of life, but we're not talking about that. We can talk about a fresh look in the church building. New paint, do this, do that. We need some of those things, but that's not really what we're looking at this morning either. But as we look at a fresh look, I want you to think about our ministry and having a view of the work that we're doing here in Fort Smith, Virginia. The work that we're doing here at Sweet Haven Baptist Church. Now, whose ministry is Sweet Haven Baptist Church? Lord. Is it Pastor Joe's ministry? No. It's 
all of ours. The work that we're doing here is part of your work. If you're a member here, or an attender here regularly, I hope you're investing your heart, your life, your finances, your time, every aspect of who you are and what you are into the work that is here, because it is not just Sweet Haven Baptist Church's work, because it's collective, it's our work. Yours and mine, we're called to be involved in these things. In the book of Ezra, we find a, a ministry work taking place. Israel had been ousted from their homeland, the temple had been destroyed, the city had been destroyed, and there was this revival taking place where the king's heart he decided to allow the people to go back to Israel to rebuild the work. Now, we are not fully rebuilding the Sweet Haven Baptist Church. So the buildings lasted, the ministry has lasted, the school has lasted, everything is pressing on, and we're excited about that. But the truth of the matter is, we don't want to talk about it, but COVID has caused a lot of problems. And not just COVID, the transition's been hard. And there's been a lot of difficult things over the last few years. So this morning, I want to look at this uh, just for a few moments and talk about this fresh look at the ministry that God has called us to do. If you're in Ezra, you're in chapter 1, I'd like you to look at verse 2. It says this, Thus saith Cyrus, the king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you, of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Verse 4 says, And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, and with, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. So what he's doing is he's saying, Look, there is a call to do a work. God is put a burden in my heart, people. To go and do a work. We're going to go rebuild the church. We're going to go rebuild the temple. We're going to watch this rise up again. And he speaks to the people of Israel and he says, Who is there among you who is called to put their hand to the labor? And that call still goes out to the church today. Christ said regarding his church, he said, I will build my church, but who is the body of Christ? We are. Who are the hands of Christ? We are. Who are the feet of Christ? We are. When Christ says, I will build my church, but then he says, you are the body of Christ. Understand this, he has called us to do the work of building the church. In him and through him. Not by our own power, not for our own mind, not for our own will, but fully surrendered to him and saying, God, through you, we want to do the work you've called us to do. And as Silas is speaking to the people of Israel, he's saying, who has God moved in the hearts of to put their hands to the work? And this morning I want to ask you the same question. Who here has God moved in your hearts to say, I will be a part of the work? You want to see this church grow? It's going to take you saying me. It's going to be me. I'll put my hands to the work. I'll go knock doors. I'll go visit people. I'll talk to people that I meet. I will stuff envelopes. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. I don't know what God's called you individually to do, but who among you would say, It's me. I've been called. I'll go. I'll do. I'll serve. I'll labor. Whatever it takes. Heaven can't hold me back because God called me to move forward. And hell sure can't get a hold of me. You see, God has called us to go and to build and to do. And there's people here who can. Some of you have been. And others, you've been talking. And the talking hasn't moved to moving. We've got to mobilize and get excited about what God has called us to do. But it's not only that. I mean, some of you would look at this call and say, God's not called me to go. God's not called me to do it. In fact, I can't. What's the other thing he says? He says, for those of you who are going to stay behind, look at verse 4 with me. He says, and whosoever remaineth any place where he sojourneth, let the men of this place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, besides the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. He said, look, there's some of you who won't go. There's some of you who won't do. But you still have a part in the work. 
It's giving towards the work. Providing for the work. And for some of you, you may not have finances, you may not have health, you may not have strength, but can you pray? Oh my goodness, what a work that is. To just say, I will be a faithful prayer warrior for my church because God has called me and that's all I can do at this stage in my life. I can pray and pray and pray and pray. Let me tell you something. The Bible says when we call out to the Lord, the windows of heaven open and He pours out blessings. I need prayer warriors. Yeah, this isn't about me. God needs prayer warriors. This church needs prayer warriors. When we're looking at the building of Israel, there were those who gave themselves to the work. Some gave physically, some gave financially, but all were called to be a praying people. Church, what's it going to look like as we move forward in 2023? We've got to be working, giving, praying, doing for the kingdom's work. God says, I will build my church, but he does it through us. I want you to look on with me, though, and turn with me into the book of Stay Ahead, or the book of chapter 3 with me, if you will. Many, many, many people put their hands to the work here. And it was a great work that they were called to do. But I want you to look here and see something in chapter 3. It says this in verse 10, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel of the trumpets and the Levites and the son of Asaph with the symbols of praise, uh, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, the king of Israel. Here, the foundation has been laid for this new work. And can you imagine seeing this? The temple had been destroyed completely. The land has now been cleared. The plants have been brought up. Materials have been brought to the property. The first work has been done. Now the foundation is laid. And if you've been involved in building, you know, once the foundation is done, the work kind of goes along quickly, doesn't it? This is a great cause for celebration in Israel. And you look at all the people who come together to celebrate the praise that brought in the, the, the professional praisers from the temple, the priests and those who have been trained in the music. Look at verse 11. And they sang together by the course of praising and giving thanks unto God because he is good. For his mercy endured forever towards Israel, and all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. They're praising God because of all the work that's been done. But look at verse 12. But many of the priests and Levites and the chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes. They wept with a loud voice. And then you look at the end of that verse that says, And many shall be loud for joy. There's two vastly different reactions to the new work that was being done. Those who remember the good old days, what the temple used to be like, when they saw the new foundation laid, you, know, you see what the results were? What the reaction was? They mourned. It's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be. It is so easy to look back and think, it's different now. It's so easy to have a reaction to what it looks like now compared to what you remember in the past or how it was done in the past. And there's some in that crowd who are mourning, and I have no doubt in a church this size, Many hearts look back at former days. I think the school used to be bigger. The pews used to be fuller. The lights used to be this way. The carpet used to be this color. You could go on and on and on and on with the different reactions. But the reality is, we can't go back to the way it used to be. We can only move forward in the work that God's called us to do now. It says that there was cries mingled with shouts of joy. And I have no doubt. Some of you look back and think, I wish it could be like it used to be. You can't. So what do we do? We move forward. Amen. We move forward doing the work that God has still called us to do. 
it's never going to look like it used to. I mean, let's think physically of our own bodies. We can look back at what we used to look like to think. I miss those days. This body is never going to look like it did when I was 18. I still move forward. My knees don't feel like they used to feel, but I still move forward. My back might hurt. My hair turns gray. It turns loose. I still move forward. <laughs> We see here a mixed reaction to a great work. Look with me if you will, verse 13. It talks about so some wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy in verse 12, verse 13, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard far off. Notice others noticed what was going on there. When people see what's going on here at Sweet Haven, they need to see and experience a very sure sound. Not a mixed murmuring. Not mourning for the past, but a, a hope and a joy for what God has in store for us. Do you know what it's going to look like here throughout the rest of this year if we join our hearts together and get busy in the work that God has called us to do? It's going to be God glorifying. I can't wait really to see it. But we've got to be surrendered to it. Now I can take you through the rest of the book of Ezra. Like I said, I've got five or six elements built into me for this morning. We don't have time for all that. But if you were to dive into chapter four, you'll see that they get the foundation laid and then opposition rises against them. Look with me, if you will, in chapter four. We're just looking at verses eight through ten, just briefly, it says this. Rehab, the Chancellor of Shamashi, and the scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes the king of this sort. And then it goes on to describe that, hey, king, it's not just me, the whole lot of us are very concerned about the work that's going on in Israel. In fact, we're disturbed about it. These are the naughty people. And they rebel after king, after king, after king, after king. They're going to do the same thing to you. He digs up their past. He smears them around in the mud, and he says, you've got to put a stop to this. You know what happened to the people of Israel at this time? These letters rise up. Not only does the king actually come against them, but they get discouraged in the work, and they quit moving forward. And it wasn't just for a year, or two years, or five years, or ten years. It was twenty-some years that that gorgeous foundation sat, and they didn't move forward at all. They lamented the past. They got discouraged with the opposition. And then they just shut down. And if you read through the book, you'll see that eventually they get encouraged, they get stirred up again, and they get going. But what could have been accomplished in 20 years of service? What could have happened? We'll never know. We've got to look to the future with this joy and this hope and this passion and say, I know that God has called us to move forward. And we're not going to get distracted with looking at the background of what we used to be. We're not going to get distracted with what the outsiders say about us. We are just going to look to the Word of God and say, this is what we're called to do, and we press on. Now, this is the fresh look that we're looking at this year. Look around you. This is beautiful. And it's only going to get better and better and better. It doesn't mean there won't be discouragement. It doesn't mean there won't be opposition. It doesn't mean there won't be problems, financial, physical, building, whatever it may be. It doesn't mean that you won't even have a disagreement with somebody sitting here. What do we do? We constantly get our heart fight with the Lord and we press on, we press on, we press on, we press on. Why? Because He is worthy. This isn't about us. This is about the fact that this is his church and he's called us to move forward. Let's go. Let's do it. Not only a fresh logo, but we're also going to talk about fresh laborers. Now we can talk about this in many different ways. We're trying to get more people to come to the church. Yes, I want that. We're trying to get outside work to come and help with this and that. Yes, I'd love to have that. What do we talk about with fresh work for? I'm talking 
talking about a fresh you. You've got to be fresh to be able to do the work that God's called you to do. You've got to be encouraged, renewed, excited. We look at David as an example of this. I want you to take the Bible with me if you want to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30. Here we find David in a moment of deep, deep discouragement. In chapter 30, verse 1, it says, The king of Aswan David and his men will come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziglag and had smitten Ziglag and burnt the fire and taken the women captives and that, that, that were there and, and slew not any, neither great nor small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David, he's been on a hard lot of battle with the Philistines. He gets rejected, so he goes home to Ziglag. When he gets home to Ziglag, he finds out that they had been raided. The town had been wiped clean of humanity. Wives, children, everyone is gone. And you can imagine the reaction of the army. David led them out by David's leading them back. And they, they don't go, oh, this is a terrible situation. They look at David and say, oh, you're a terrible leader. You failed. You're miserable. You're rotten. You're horrible. Hey, we're going to kill you. They actually decided they were going to stone David because... They didn't agree with his leadership to this portion. Here David has an opportunity to try to talk to them, to try to convince them, to try to uh, manipulate them, or try to change their minds, to try to do this, to try to do that. You know what David does? He turns to God. We talk about being fresh. I'm going to tell you, this world is going to come against you. Discouragement is abounding in this world. Frustrations, irritations, people getting offended by everything you do, say, and think. And we can try to convince the whole world, hey, we're not against you, we're for you, we're trying to help you, we're just trying to show you the scripture. Let me tell you something, that doesn't work with the world. You know what does work? Turning to God. When we talk about being a fresh worker, you know God's called you to do a work. But if you're discouraged in the work, what good are you to the Lord? I want you to look at what the Bible says that David did in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Look at verse 6. It says that David was greatly distressed. The reality was terrible. He was greatly distressed. But the people spake with stoning him because the soul of all the men was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. The situation was bleak. But look what David did. It says, But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know, church, this has got to be a daily thing for us. If we want to be fresh in the work that we are called to do, fresh in our approach to ministry, fresh in the work of the church, we've got to stop on a regular basis as individuals and encourage ourselves in the Lord. We've got to remind ourselves of who He is and what He's done for us. Yes, everything else may seem like it's falling apart. The threat for David was real. The distress was real. The situation was bad. But what was his response to it? He turned to God. Church, if you need more energy to serve God, you turn to Him. If you need more encouragement in the midst of distress, you turn to Him. If you need help in the times of trouble, you turn to Him. Why? Because He's good. He's always good. And sometimes you just have to remind yourself of these things. David spoke to himself. We looked at the Psalms over and over and over and over again. Essentially, he just said, Self, you need to praise God. Self, you need to get your heart right. Self, you need to do this. You need to do that. What's he doing? He's encouraging himself in the Lord. We have got to learn to remind ourselves that he is our hope. He is our joy. He is our stay. If you get to the point where you think, I need to get to church because I'm discouraged, you're missing the point. You don't have to get anywhere except to him. You don't have to wait until Sunday to feel better about your relationship with God. All you have to do is talk to him and encourage yourself in him. Right at home. Right at work. Right in your car, right where you are. You understand he's always available to you. How great is that? 
There's no waiting period between you having fellowship with your Savior. He's always available. David encouraged himself in the Lord. So we look at fresh work, fresh labors, and then finally, it's kind of similar to a little bit different. Fresh hearts. It allows us to be not weary in loathing. Why does it have to tell us, don't get tired of doing good? Because it's exhausting. Do you think Jesus was weary in serving? Physically, oh yeah. He got very tired. How often was there things going on that Jesus lay down to sleep? Because he was warm. He was weary. When the Bible says that the woman came up and touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says virtue came out of him. I think it taxed him. Every time he healed someone, I think it took energy from him. And he would heal for hours and hours and hours sometimes. I think he was a very tired individual. But I don't think he was ever tired of doing good. I don't think he was ever weary in well doing. Physically, you're going to get tired. But in your heart, we ought to be renewed day by day by day by day. Because if you let your heart get tired of doing good, guess what happens? You start failing at it. You start giving up on it. You start walking away from it. You start saying, I can't, I won't, I shouldn't. And you start letting the best things in our ministry go. <clears throat> you don't be weary of well doing. We get Psalms chapter 51. Here we find David talking again. And Psalms chapter 51 is the prayer after he has been so far from the Lord. He messed up terribly. But there's a phrase in this passage that I love because he says this in the brokenness of his heart. He's crying out to God. In Psalms chapter 51, look at verse 10 with me, if you want. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So often we try to find a way to renew our own spirits. I just need a vacation and then I'll be ready to go again. No. You do need vacations. Don't get it wrong. Your body needs rest and you need to take a break. But that's not going to refresh your spirit. What refreshes our spirit? It's the spirit of God. Allowing him to wash over us again and again and again. In a few moments tonight, or this morning, we're going to be doing our communion service. What are we doing? We're drawing close to him again. And we're re-energized for the work that he's called us to do. You don't have to wait till church. You don't have to wait till communion. He is ready to wash over you over and over and over again. Created me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Let God make your heart right. You know what it takes of? Complete surrender. Letting Him do that work in you. Go to Psalms chapter 100 for a moment, if you will. We talked about this at length here very recently. Psalms 100. And verse 4, we talk about having a right heart with God or having a fresh heart with God. Psalms 100, verse 4, it says this Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful of him. Bless his name. You want to have a fresh heart? Check yourself when you come into his presence. Make sure your heart is right with him. When we enter into his presence, it ought not be as a child who goes in and sits on Sabbath knee and says, This is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. I want. <laughs> That's not how it works with the Almighty God. We go before him, and the Bible commands us to come before his presence with singing and with joy and with thanksgiving. You see, our approach to him starts with who he is. He is worthy, he is holy. He is amazing. And when we see, like Isaiah, come before his presence, what happens to Isaiah? He says, Follow me, for I am undone. We ought to be undone when we approach him. And coming to him, offering him the gifts and the sacrifices of our praise and our thanksgiving because he is worthy. You want to have a fresh heart? Approach him right. Make sure that as you come into his presence, and whether that be walking through these doors coming into the church, or whether it be entering into your prayer closet at home, 
or dealing with your family, or dealing with your children, or dealing with your co-workers, you get right with God and stay right with God, and it will encourage your heart. It will give you a fresh approach to who he is and what he's doing. Proverbs chapter 3, you don't need to turn here just for time's sake, it's through the banners on the screen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it lays it out for us. It says, Trust the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all of the ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Say, Lord, I feel far from you. Lord, I feel empty. Lord, I feel like our relationship is strained. Lord, I feel like I'm not enjoying life. Lord, I feel like I'm not able to serve you. Here's the answer to all those problems. Trust in Him with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. That means you recognize Him for who He is. The Bible declares that He will direct your paths. When we talk about the word fresh, I mean fresh heart, fresh mind, fresh workers, all of these things, the word fresh can be interchanged for refresh, renewed, restored. What do you need this morning? In your heart, what do you need to draw close to him? Do you need a freshness? He offers it. You just need to go to the right place. It's him and him alone. Trust the Lord with all that heart, lean not into that understanding. In all that ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. We're going to go ahead and pray as we prepare to move towards our time of fellowship with the Lord. As we pray this morning, may the Lord spoke to your heart about something very specific. Whatever it is, my heart's prayer is that you will be right with God before you walk out of the room. Do you need a fresh hand? Do you need an encouragement? Do you need the fire of your heart to be rekindled? What do you need for that? Maybe you surrender. Maybe you say, I just haven't been engaged with the church the way I know I need to be. There's something else that you could be doing, you know God's called you. For some reason or another, you know that. Maybe it's financially. I'm not one of the heartful offerings, but if you've not been faithful in that, how can you expect God's blessing on your life? Maybe it's nothing that I mentioned this morning, but there's something else where God is touching your heart saying, This needs to be right. Whatever it is, will you hear it right this morning? Before you walk through the doors today, you can know that you and God are reconciled. Everything is good between you and Him. Love that old song, Nothing Between My Soul and the Savior. Don't think you're today there's something between your soul and the Savior. And I'll say this too as we get ready to move into our time of recognizing the Lord's Supper. This is the time where you get your heart right with Him. Typically, we have a time of silence where we pray about that you now. If there's anything in your heart you need to get right with the Lord, just let it be right now. He's so good. Don't let these moments pass by without being right with him. Let's go to prayer now. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I am so thankful to you for all of your goodness, your love, and your mercy. Lord, by your grace, we pray that you would help us. Lord, as we look to 2023 to have a fresh approach in our hearts, and our minds, in our service, in our relationship with you. Lord, in everything that we do and say and thank you, Lord, we pray that you and you alone will be glorified. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. And Father, we ask all of these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to this message from Sweet Haven Baptist Church. It's our prayer that this was an encouragement to you and that it would help you in your walk with Jesus Christ. For more information, visit us at SweetHavenBaptist.com or better yet, come visit us in person. Until next time, God bless you. This is Pastor Joe.